Welcome to the gap. This is the gap. Yeah. They should have never gave you platform. Ooh, y'all see the giggers? Uh, you know the Harlem Shake? I call this the Oakland Shuffle. <laughs> What's good with y'all out there? This is another episode of The Gab. I'm your host, Kamal. Hey, give yourself a goddamn hand clap. I got the best audience out there. You feel me? Yeah. Kids learning and shit. You feel me? Hey, I appreciate all y'all. From the ugly to the beautiful to the in-betweeners. Hey, man. I like to thank my sponsors, First Place Losers. The link to the shop gonna be in the description below. <laughs> Y'all go check out the garments. For my tubers out there, YouTube been around since 2005. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video or the channel booming. But I do need to tell y'all to sub and share. Sub and share for your boy. For my potters out Lord. there, bro, I'm on Google Podcasts, I'm on Apple Podcasts, and I'm on SoundCloud. On all those platforms. All you got to do is type in either Kamal Johnson or oh, ENT or The Gab and I'll pop right up. Bow! Wooers! All right. Y'all know the format of the show? But let's just hop right into it. We got to talk about these goddamn <sighs> no-knock raids. Yo, quite honestly, as a black person, I'm tired of this shit. We are tired of these goddamn no-knock raids. This shit is very dangerous, and to me personally, it feels unconstitutional. Like, god damn. It's just like, bruh, I'm going to tell you the sources I get give from early. Look here. From life. I see it. Social medias. All type of articles. And I read a more detailed Version of the shit in the Washington Post. We are tired of these goddamn no-knock raids. Like, goodness, bro. Essentially, what a no-knock uh, raid is, is basically a, is a no-knock warrant. And it's just exactly what it sounds like. They have a warrant for somebody to arrest, and they don't need to knock on the door to go into the spot. They just bow, kick the Ickety. door in. Or they had that big ass metal look like a log thing and bow right into the goddamn door. Like, what do they expect people to do? Jesus Christ. Like, you just walk around and bust into somebody's house without them knowing you unannounced. And they said it too. Like, in a search warrant, police has to announce themselves. With no knock warrants, they don't have to do it. When people are in, feel like they're in danger, if they got the strap, you think they're going to pull it out? They probably think somebody robbing them or something. Or run. And these niggas shooting and shit. Officers come in. Bah, 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 bah. They ain't saying shit. They ain't announcing themselves. They come in. Bow. Where the drugs at? Where the heroin? Where the coke? Bah, 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 bah. That shit is terrifying, bro. Message. That is terrifying. But like. Certain no knocks warrants, like in Houston, which led to a man and woman getting killed, four our officers getting popped. And for what? They didn't even, there was no evidence of any drugs in there. They didn't find the heroin that they said that they had. And what happened was these things called CIs, confidential informants. The officer said, Oh, he actually fabricated. A uh, CI, he just made up a confidential informant that said that it had heroin in that house. These officers be making up shit. Message. Lying to the judge. And a judge, instead of them going carefully and reading the yeah. review of somebody wanting the warrant, they just believe the, the merit of the yeah. officer. That's because they be knowing each other and have relationships. But instead of them doing a due diligence and they motherfucking job, they just be like, What'd you say? You said your CI said that they selling they selling uh meth out in that house over there? They selling heroin out that house over there? 
they be like this. All right. Go ahead, kick the door down. It's all good. And, man, it, they said it's so easy for these niggas to Diggity. just get these motherfucking warrants and shit. They damn near be <laughs> asking G's and Googling shit. Like, officer, like, da, 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 da. How, how to write up a no knock warrant on Google and it pop up. Jesus Christ. Shit's fucking bullshit, bro. Man. Didn't find nothing, and the officer fabricated this shit. I didn't see nothing in there where the officer got in trouble for that shit. Message! Let the man and a woman dead. And in the article, they, they, they were like, a white man. Also, what really starts stirring up the pot was in 2019, when R.P. Breonna Taylor, when she, uh, when she got killed, because of a no-knock motherfucking warrant off her ex-boyfriend that didn't live there. And that's because these motherfuckers are not doing their homework. The officers are fucking bullshitting and lying. The judges ain't taking the time out they motherfucking day and doing their goddamn due diligence and reviewing this shit and making sure that an in in innocent civilian ain't getting killed behind this fucking bullshit. We got to get rid of this shit, bruh. Amir Locke. Another motherfucker got killed. R.I.P. to Amir Locke. Because of a goddamn no-knock <laughs> warrant. God damn, these shits is bullshit. Oh my God, bruh. Man. I personally think that no knock warrants are unconstitutional, and the way that is perceived and how they're executed is people are not taking the the time to really go over this shit. And it is also <laughs> known that Black and Hispanic people are more likely targeted when it comes to no knock warrants. Message. And I already explained how dangerous this shit is. God damn! Tired of this shit, bro. I I guarantee Judge Joe Brown or Judge Judy wouldn't issue no no knock warrant. What? Well, maybe Judge Judy would. <laughs> she might. I don't know. God damn. But at the end of the day, look it. No knock warrants are dangerous for everybody. From the <laughs> officers to the goddamn innocent civilians, even to the criminals that they trying to <laughs> catch. The shit is a load of bullshit. And we having a lot of our black and brown brothers and sisters getting killed. Off with no knock warrants. And personally, I am tired of the shit. Tired of reading about this shit. I'm tired of hearing about this shit. I'm tired of looking at one of a another of our black brothers and sisters that's fucking innocent getting fucking murdered. Yes, I said it. Murdered in cold fucking blood because of a no knock warrant. Are these niggas act surprised that if somebody do have a, a strap in their house to protect themselves and they end up popping some cops because they didn't know they were cops because of motherfuckers just bust through the goddamn door without announcing themselves and that person thinking they in danger. They thinking they getting robbed. What you going to think in your motherfucking brain if somebody just bust through your door without announcing themselves? You going to think that motherfucking intruder. And what's the <laughs> American way? Protect yourself by any means necessary. You know what? I don't think that's American way. I think Malcolm X said that shit. <laughs> but you know how it is how Americans be trying to protect themselves at all costs, no matter the fuck what. Man. Look at man. When it comes to these no-knock warrants, I personally say you should get rid of them. But at this point, I don't think that's possible. So, 
if they're not going to get rid of no-knock warrants, this leads back to the, the whole thing of us saying that we have to screen police officers better or people that we have in the judicial system better. Because not only the police, it's also the judges that issue out these no-knock warrants. Message! And yes, there's an undertone line of racism. That nigga always lurking around. But then I'm going to beat that nigga ass. I'm going to beat racism. I'm going to whoop the fuck out of racism ass. I'm going to backhand and slap the dog goddamn shit out that nigga. Jesus Christ. My bad, y'all. A little aggressive. <laughs> I'm trying to tone it down. And then CI's confidential informants. A lot of times, them motherfuckers either lying or they don't even exist. Officers lie too. We have to remember, people. These motherfuckers are humans too. We have good motherfucking humans and we have terrible <laughs> humans. <sighs> Bro, end of the day, man, I don't want to see no more no knock warrants. Too many of too many of our black brothers and sisters are getting killed off this nonsense. And I'm tired of this shit. Alright? Get the Get it. out of here, no knock warrants. Go set go suck a bag of dicks. <laughs> anyway, alright, we about to get into the next segment. And you know what segment we about to get into? We about to get into the sad, sad. segment. And I had to talk about this right here. Mmm. Super pumped! The battle for Uber on Showtime. And uh y'all know I'm a stat teacher, so let me uh let me get the statistics first. And by the way, this came out February 27th, but one at one at two. Alright, so let me give you the stats. INDB gave it a 7.2. Excuse me. And Ron Tomatoes gave it a 58%. And you know what? I agree with these goddamn critics. Man. So with that being said, frick them. And the people gave it a 49%. You know what? Y'all all get motherfucking hand claps. Y'all get the goddamn clap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to tell you right now, first couple episodes are pretty good. Then after that, I don't know if they switch writers or they just was like, Door? this shit, we don't care no more. It got lack <laughs> luster. Oh my God, bruh. It was just getting to a whole cluster of shit. And I was just like, bruh. I kept watching it because, like, that's how I am when I watch bad movies or bad shows and shit. Like, I just get really enthralled in it. And I'm like, bruh, I gotta finish this shit, even though it's terrible. Like, and this is how this show was. It was like, it was really good at first. They had great actors. Um, Like I say, the, the directing was pretty good, too. Storyline! After a while, if the storyline is f***ing poo, then everything else just goes out the window. Unless they just immaculate with the goddamn directing and the acting. And like I said, there was some dope actors in here, you feel me? They had Uma Thurman, they had Joseph gordon Levett. you feel me? They even had Kyle Chandler. You know, Joseph gordon Levett. he was Travis Kalanak, and he was the CEO of Uber. And that motherfucker was a God damn. You know, he was going through some shit. He was a Giggity. asshole. And Uma Thurman was Ariana Huffington. You know, from the Huffington Post. And she was like very soft, soft and like very like zen and was helping out this nigga Travis. But man. And then you, Kyle Chandler, he was Bill Gurley. He was like the investor and the CEO and was like, you know, trying to help out Travis and shit. But Travis was on his own shit. And then they get, like, alright, before I get into the dirty details, basically, this is showing the f***ing, the rise and the fall of the CEO of Uber. And as you know, Uber still exists. So, a company could be f***ing incredible, and the CEO could be terrible. Trash. So, this is basically, a. Uh, you know, off the uh, book created by Mike Isaac. And like I said, it was the rise of the, and fall of the CEO, Travis Kalanick. And 
Yeah, American Anthology. Well, like I said, he was a terrible CEO. The company of Uber, like, really got exposed. It was really a great business model because it was just basically trying to knock out the uh, cab industry, or they call it the ride share industry, and he was trying to take over. And I don't lie, man, them goddamn cabs. Them cabbies break on you know, my motherfucking nerves when I used to have to take cabs. They were rude. I seen them sometimes. They go, remember you took the cab and they start the meeting and you didn't even move yet? And I'll be looking at them and I'm like, how that shit go from $2 to $5 in a matter of two minutes? What? Huh? Huh? <laughs> like, how does that happen, bruh? Oh my God. <laughs> like, nigga, we went two blocks, bruh. How did it jump $3? Kick it. Man. I see how Uber doing the shit now. They try to do, they try to say it's a, a, a surge, surge charges. $5 surge charge. Get the f out of here with that bullshit. But yeah, it started in San Francisco and shit in the Silicon Valley area. And actually, San Francisco and Silicon Valley not in the same area. Most of the ride sharing that they were showing in this was in San Francisco, but where most of the business was happening in Silicon Valley. All right. But. He was going through troubles with them and trying to get permits and like legislative and all the, the rules and politics. He even had run-ins with Gore. Uh, no, what's the nigga? It wasn't Steve Jobs. It was uh, he never met Steve Jobs or they sh they didn't show him meeting Steve Jobs, but he met the part the owner of Google and them niggas kind of clashed. And then he was kind of clashing with uh Apple and shit because they were talking about. We're not about to have your goddamn app on the goddamn uh, uh, Apple store. Because we're hearing about your company, and you not only you disrespecting minorities, but you disrespecting women like a motherfucker. And it's true, like, it was so much sexual harassment going on. And he didn't give a f about the goddamn employees except his own little close-knit team. And, like, he got caught up one with a driver and... They sold the driver dreams, though. They basically was like, come over to us, being a cab driver, come over to us, we'll give you stock, we'll give you little stock options, and, you know, we'll give you this, but you have to buy this type of car. And a lot of them got <laughs> shitted on because they just got left in a bad deal and got left the car payments of <laughs> like, limousine or them, you know, them Giggity. cars in Buick looking type cars or it look like presidential shit yeah they got stuck with the payment of that so and one of the drivers had him on videotape talking about it ain't my <laughs> fault it's you niggas fault y'all should have read the fine print who the fuck read the fine print nigga only fine we concerned about is beauty not print but hey lesson learned Hey, start reading that fine print out there. And if you don't know the jargon or to read it, hey man, we all, all of us got a homie, or at least a homie of a homie, that's a lawyer or something. Come on, man. Let's do our due diligence, you feel me? You see how they do us out here? And why I'm saying us, because the motherfucker was a minority that he was over. He was like a, uh, he was a nigga from like Palestine or Arabic or something. You know what I mean? But yeah, bro, he was like, bro, that's y'all shit. Then, this nigga travels up relationship-wise, too. He left the older Asian chick, which had his back, was helping him out, and he always would call when he was in the body. He was like, oh my God, bro, I don't know what I'm talking to. I mean, you do. And she was always there for him, but at the end of the day, she was like, you know what, nigga? I can't f with you like that, because you left me for a younger Asian chick. That's exactly what he did. He was always looking for the next best thing. And now it's his damn downfall. God damn it, Travis. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, bruh. Always looking for the next best thing. Just how it is. Come on. This is America. America. This is how we are. We always looking for the next best thing, and it could be detrimental. And that's basically what's happening, bro. And then he starts like cheat, like treating his goddamn 
new girlfriend liked shit too. He was always focused on the mission. And he wasn't really, really focused on people. And that was a message in itself. You're trying to be a boss, trying to be a CEO, people over profits. That's how you get your motherfucking business longevity. Message! But most niggas don't do that. And that's what we saw in this. And But he was going through shit too. Like his, his, uh, his mom died from like a boating accident with his dad. His dad was in like urgent care on life support and shit. He didn't really have a great relationship with his brother. They were butt heads and shit. And like one of his, um, uh, one of his, uh, like best friends and then also his colleague that Bill Gurley brought in, that nigga backstabbed him. Them niggas was talking too much in meetings. Uh, reporters were kicking him over because they were saying shit like, oh, this is gonna be. What's that reporter lingo they say? This is off the books. It's never off the books. It's always on the books. No matter what you say, it's always going to be on the books. Message. Both Travis and that other nigga was talking way too goddamn much. Jesus Christ. Like I said, he, was, he created too many enemies in my opinion. He had too many enemies. And his sword game wasn't good enough. <laughs> Essentially. You got to be able to be like, have that long-term you money before you could be like, you to people. And that's how he was. And it was like, I like Bert energy. That's why they call it Super Pump. Because nigga was always amp. Let's get it. Yeah. But at some point, you got to tone it down. Because it's not a sports team. I'm sorry. That's great. That's great for sports. He brought that sports mentality to a ride share business. But at the end of the day. Most people ain't gonna like that. They not built for the sports type environment. So, and like I said, he he really wasn't listening to people too. Like people were trying to give him advice and be like, tell him like, you might need to chill out. You're doing a lot, a lot going on with your company, a lot of sexual harassment allegation. And then when like when he lost Ariana Huffington, when she start having people come in. And they were talking about all the sexual allegations and what was going on and discrimination. And then she saw the one chick that was like down for Travis for the longest and Travis kind of booed her. She had enough. Had enough. And was just like, you know what? You got to step down. CEO, you can't be a part of the company. And Travis was basically like, I can't do this. This shit is a part of me. This is my f***ing life. And at the end of the day, he still gave that nigga a severance package. Like, you got to go. Because Uber was a company that wasn't going to fail. But they were losing so much profit because of this nigga. He had to go. He had to be in the background. He wasn't. He just wasn't listening. And they kind of just cut him off. And Yeah, that's the end. <laughs> that's the end of the damn series. I'm telling you, bro. Like, the beginning was good. But at the end, it was such lackluster. I don't know if the... The writers are getting tired of this. Day. The company of Uber, they're like, Ugh, I'm tired of writing about this shit. This nigga's an asshole. He treating his employees like shit. And the employees there that doing great productive work, them niggas was assholes too. All types of sexual allegations and sexual harassments and mistreating other motherfucking workers, especially minorities. I'm telling you, bro. Uber. Start made me think. Damn, I should take more lift. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I was part of the goddamn problem. So many Uber rides that I pushed on my app. I should have been going with Lyft. You know why they call it Lyft? Because they will lift your spirits. Unlike Uber. They're just Uber about the money. And the profits. But yeah, that was basically it. Oh, and a doozy right here. This made me think, like, in the, the day, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it was fucked up. You know, his mom died and all that shit. And he was going through or losing his company all at once. It was all hitting him. You know the old saying, when it rains, it pours. Well, it was pouring on this nigga head. But I can't feel too sorry for these niggas. 
Because even though him and Bill Gurley lost the seats and stuff for Uber and stuff like that, if this an L, this a type of L that I want. These motherfuckers became billionaires after this. Jesus Christ. Billionaires. Their L, L. See that? Their L was a Billy. What? God damn. Wow. Wow. Like 5.2 billion for giggity. Travis Kalanick and then Bill Gurley went out with like, I think three or four billion. Oh, Some shit like God. that. Arian uh, Huffington, they didn't even announce her <laughs> payment. She probably had Buku bucks. She probably got paid the most. Everybody in that company, and they showed off that show, they all walked off with billions or hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of millions. Damn. They still walked off good at the end of the day. And that was their L. When the other motherfucking employees that were driving and riding for them, their L's were losing their homes, couldn't pay their bills, even lost the car that they were leasing. See the difference of their L's? The common people L compared to them rich, greedy bastards L. Bruh. Man. But yeah, man. Hey, I don't look it. If y'all would have just kept it how the first three episodes were and kept that writing with that suspense and kind of, I'd have gave y'all hand claps. But you know what? Y'all get poos. But like I say, man, look it, man. That was a super pumped. The Battle of Uber on Showtime. Like I say, I don't deter you or encourage you to watch these movies, these shows. Are these albums that I review? Do what the hell you want. I'm just giving you my opinion on it. And like I say, shit was poo. <laughs> yeah, I see why they were super pumped. Shit, super pumped to become <laughs> billionaires after all the fuck shit they did. Damn, super pumped. Travis Kalina dick. <laughs> Cause he was a Orf. dick. That guy. Alright, y'all know what time it is. It is meme time. And I got some juicy memes for y'all. Alright, bro. So, you know, first topic we talked about, we talked about the no knock warrants. And that shit shouldn't be no more. Bullshit. But I did find a meme that was kind of funny <laughs> that goes on with it. And they got the SWAT team of police breaking a goddamn glass door. Just got gal shattered to shit. And it reads, trick or treat, we dressed as terrorist. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Terror. Yeah, nigga, these niggas are f***ing terrorists, bro. What the f***? God damn. Damn, they be coming in. They don't even say nothing. They just come in with the... That's what they do first. They don't announce themselves. They come in bussing. God damn. I had that, that was kind of funny though. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they are. <laughs> Giggity. Man. Alright. Alright, so we know we did, you know, Uber. We talked about Super Pump. And the rise and the fall of the CEO, Trevor Kalanaki. I heard of <laughs> his name is. And we all done did the Uber app, and this done happened to me before, and I know it done happened to you out there. So, it has the Uber app, and it has, you know, the car, where it usually show you your driver and where it's at. And somehow, the driver name is Danish. And somehow, Danish is in the middle of the ocean. What? How the f*** did they get there? I don't fuck know. But it shows them in the middle of water. And it reads, I think my Uber driver is in trouble. And the text read, you good? Hi. On the way. See, that's how you know it's f***ed up. Because they didn't say hi, I'm on the way. It says hi, on the way. All right. So I think they're saying they hi, on the way. <laughs> and it says, am lost. And then it reads, for another person, how did this happen, Denise? 
<laughs> and for real, bro, I done had it where a couple times where the driver and it shows the driver in like in the body of the water, and you like, yo, how did this happen? Oh my god! How are you in the middle of the goddamn ocean? You should you should be drowning. What the? F how are you able to text? <laughs> Deal! This bet is a glitch in the app though. But also these motherfuckers do this shit because they gonna cancel their walk their ride so they can get that easy five dollars. Yeah, you thought you thought I didn't know that trick out there, drivers. You thought I didn't know, but god damn it, I done Uber before and I knew the ins and outs of the shit, okay? Damn. <laughs> but I hope Denise is okay, cause it look like they in, in the body of water drowning. <laughs> Alright. I had to get another Uber meme for y'all because I saw this and this shit was hilarious. And it had the cat in one of those uh, those little driver, little kid car things or whatever. And the cat rolling. And they got not only the Uber, but they got the lift stick on there too. Oh, so y'all switch your size, huh? Y'all double dipping. Cat out here double dipping. You got to choose a side, player. Can't be double dipping. Alright? <laughs> and it reads, hey, it's your Uber driver here. Am outside. It's the, the, the terrible English. <laughs> Bro, this is how they be texting. You be like, what are the fuck you saying? But it makes sense because they be tech they be picking up a lot of drunk and high motherfuckers, and them niggas ain't texting good either. They be like, outside here. You be like, here? Outside question mark where are you at or where? <laughs> Here, like nigga <laughs> Yeah, they texting like a cat. That's what it is. They everybody texting like a cat. This is how te this is how cat text. Ah <laughs> uh, meow 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 <laughs> Meow 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 <laughs> Oh my god, bruh. <sighs> Alright, man. Oh man. I appreciate y'all. If y'all watching or listening, I got the best audience out there, you feel me? Got the kids watching, they learning. Give yourself a goddamn hand clap. Y'all the best out there. And my audience, y'all starting to uh interact more, you feel me? I appreciate it. From the positive to the negative comments. I don't give a damn. I just love y'all interacting. Mm, thank you. I'm your host, Kamal. Once again, this is another episode of The Gab. I'd like to thank my sponsor, First Place Losers. The link to the shop is going to be in the description below. Y'all go check out the garments. They're so soft on the skin. Oh. <laughs> For my tubers out there, YouTube been around since 2005. I don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the video or the channel booming. But I do need to tell y'all to sub and share. Sub and share Gorf. for your boy. For my potters, though. I'm on Apple Podcasts, I'm on Google Podcasts, and I'm on SoundCloud. All you got to do is type in The Gap. Or Kamal Johnson ENT. Bam! And I pop right up. Ears! Man. On that note, I'm out of here. Peace out, y'all. Hey, man. I'm going to have to stop taking Uber and take Lyft, man. Because uh, Uber a wild company. I ain't even had no f***ing idea. This was good. This was good. Ooh, yeah.